All righty, we'd like to welcome everybody back. Uh, we're going to continue on uh, with our session today. Uh, hopefully you, you have any specific questions about the work of the foundation, the information that Patrick was covering. Uh, you can contact our office and uh, make sure to get any of those questions answered. Um, I'm Paul Schwartz. I'm going to continue on with the rest of the session. We're going to be talking about a number of things this morning and this afternoon. Uh, the agenda for the sessions that we're going to be covering next, uh, starting with definitions and terminology, uh, as well as rules and regulations. Coordinating of administrative authorities. We find this is really important with the shutdown test, uh, making sure that the agencies that are responsible are coordinating actively. And then we actually get into the shutdown test protocols, the various tests from preparation for the tests to the test selection, uh, talking about some of the pros and cons of those, and then also what type of report might be generated at the end of this. So these are some of the subjects that we'll be covering. And as a reminder, we will be taking our, uh, every hour or so, taking our break. Uh, so if you have questions during the session, make sure the folks that are in line to send that qu those questions in, and we'll try to address those as we move along. Um, definitions and terminology. We find this has really been an issue that has confused people as we've talked about recycled water, especially at sessions all over the country because we find that the terminology is quite different. And the terminology that we find being used can vary tremendously. Even though we may be talking about the very same issues, we find quite frequently that the terminology can sound different. So when we start looking at some of the terminology regarding recycled water, uh, you'll find documents quite frequently, we'll call it either reclaimed water, reuse, even gray water, which in most contexts we think is a little bit different uh, than recycled, is used in this context in some areas. And then we'll also be talking about some gray water issues. So again, the terminology seems to be all over the map, and this is where we find quite frequently things can get a little confusing because of the different terminology that's used around uh, most of North America. Um, by definition, Recycled water means water which has a result of treatment of waste, and that's really the key point is waste, out of the waste stream, out of the sewage waste stream, is suitable for a direct beneficial use. And you'll see the beneficial use, uh, which is normally considered the transportation you know, uh, from one point of treatment to the point of use. So again, some positive beneficial use that would not other occur, otherwise it would be considered a valuable resource. So this is where we find quite frequently recycled water has a pretty broad spectrum of definition. As compared to gray water, which sometimes is mistakenly used in the same context, usually has a different meaning here, which means wastewater which has not been contaminated by any toilet uh, discharge. It can include wastewater from bathtubs, showers, bathroom wash basins, clothes washing machines, laundry tubs, but does not include kitchen sinks or dishwashers. So as we look through a lot of the codes and a lot of definitions, we find that there usually is a very distinct differentiation between gray water and recycled water. And we're finding that in a lot of the applications, how we look at it regarding cross-connection control is significantly different. So these are really kind of the base terms we're going to be using through the rest of the day. When we start thinking about gray water systems, some people say, why are we even bothering? And when we bring this subject up in some areas, they don't understand why we would want to get involved with any waste stream of any type. Discharge, waste, sewage, which should just be handled and forgotten. Well, as we look at many areas, Here's some nice lush green grass that's growing here. Well, here in Southern California, this is what many of us has been faced with, with all our water cutbacks, water conservation issues. Because of that, we've had to let our grass look like this. So now all of a sudden we have a nice brown front yard rather than the nice lush green grass. So a lot of residents have looked at what alternate uh, 
options do I have? And it's kind of interesting in this field where we find quite frequently an, an industry that has grown tremendously is the, I'll say, simulation of green grass. And here we actually have a case where there are companies that come out and paint your dead grass with green dye to make it look green. So even though we can't water it, we can't produce real grass, we can make it at least look green and look nice. A lot of these industries started from the uh, real estate market where they were trying to make houses look better on you know, open houses, et cetera, painting the grass, making them look very lush. But it has really transpired into businesses now where because of the water cutbacks, uh, they're painting dirt and dead grass to make it look better. So this is where a lot of the residential applications say, what other options do I have? And this is where gray water quite frequently is an option that is fairly easy, especially on a residential level. If we even look at the plumbing code, you'll see that there are specific uh, outlines of how you can gather that gray water in your residence and use it for subterranean irrigation. So when we were looking at the plumbing code a little bit later, you'll see there's actually specific guidance on how you do that. We find it also interesting that in a lot of areas, they will have brochures, and here are just some samples of brochures from some different locations, showing in very simplistic terms what is meant by the capturing of gray water. To the general homeowner, the resident, they may not always understand. They just know what goes down the drain, regardless of where it comes from, can I reuse that? So some of these documents that you may find uh, from a variety of areas around the United States graphically show a little bit more detail about what is meant by gray water. You know, it is not coming from the toilet. It's not coming from sewer contaminated waste, but perhaps from washing machines, showers, uh, and that's where some of these help to the homeowner understand more thoroughly where gray water is coming from and how it can be used. And this is where a lot of the areas that have been cut back in their water usages, this becomes a very viable option. Uh, again, very graphic, trying to show, again, the homeowner what they should and shouldn't do. Here was a case of another little brochure, and they tried to make it as graphic, showing where uh, on some of these to the far right, where some of the applications where you're grabbing water from probably one of the larger water-using fixtures in the home is the clothes washing machine where it may be using 5 and 10, 15, 20 gallons of water during a cycle, which normally would just go down the drain. So capturing that waste stream and using it for irrigation is a very viable option. However, some of the issues that come up there are what kind of detergents are being used. Uh, I've seen yards that have used this where they've actually applied it on the surface rather than subterranean, and you see suds growing out on the backyard you know, where they're running the water out there. Uh, you'll see that in this illustration, they also show kind of a yellow area where kind of a marginal area, and then definitely red. The red is around the toilet. So that is, try, again, try to visually show the homeowner what is and isn't gray water. So this is where we find, again, the, the public's perception of gray water is kind of an unknown uh, they hear about it. I know even my own neighbors I've talked to, they don't truly understand what that means. And as you tell them, some think, of, oh, that's not too difficult to do. Some minor plumbing modifications. Well, anytime we talk about plumbing modifications, I think those of us in cross-connection control get a little worried because do the people really understand what they're doing? You know, they cut into a pipe, they cut into a sewer line, and start hooking up potable water line to this, I mean, we start worrying about potential cross connections. So gray water systems, as valuable as they are, we find quite frequently people just don't understand what, what things could go wrong and how we could actually create potential cross connections.